<laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I am Carrie the Mortician, and this is Live with Carrie the Mortician at Try and Do Weekly, but Coffee with Carrie. So, just kind of a chat, very honest, open chat where you can ask questions. But more importantly, if you've submitted questions ahead, I'm going to ask those questions or answer those questions and had a few submitted and I'm going to dive right into them. Um, so gentleman emailed me he said, I just saw a video about a man whose pregnant wife was killed in a car accident. The video showed the fetus baby in the mother's arms in the casket. I recall you saying that the fetus of a pregnant woman is treated as viscera when the cavity embalming is done. Have you ever seen a fetus removed from the viscera and separated separately embalmed or was that video bunk? So back again, this also depends on you know, if they try to remove the baby when they're saving the woman or if both are dead upon arrival, if the woman is autopsied or not, I have received pregnant women who are not autopsied. So the baby is in the abdomen. So there, it, there's so many variables to answering this question. I know that there are medical examiners. I've seen some TikTok, some different things where they're talking about this and saying, yes, we do remove the baby because we do sometimes separately then autopsy the baby. So depending how I receive that pregnant woman and the child at the funeral home. You know, sometimes the family will say, hey, can you remove the baby? We want the baby back in the woman's belly or we want the baby in the woman's arms. This isn't a straight cut answer sort of question because of all these variables I've already listed. But the baby is going to be embalmed on its own unless it is still in the abdomen. So the one where I received a woman, she was pregnant when she died, the baby was not removed from the abdomen, we embalm as we usually would. And yes, we aspirate, we do the cavity. It's a horrible thought and I get that. Babies will decompose super fast inside the woman's belly. So if we want to preserve that woman the best we can, we do have to aspirate and try to get cavity fluid into the different parts of the abdomen. No, we don't want to stab through the baby. That's not what we want to do. What embalmer would want that feeling or memory or emotion in them? Nobody. We want to make sure that placenta and what is in there is treated though. It's a very thin line to walk of uh, making sure we treat it without trying to damage the baby. But some embalmers will just do what they need to do. Um, if the baby is out, we will embalm that baby separately or fetus as you're referring. But once a baby's out, it's no longer a fetus. It's really a baby at that point. Um, so I wish that that answer was more solid for you. Unfortunately, it's not because of the variable. So it depends how we receive the woman, how we receive the baby, and then we will embalm accordingly. Now, hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I'm just diving into questions um, today because I don't have a lot of time, but wanted to make sure to get some to get some, to some of these. Leo, no, I, you know, most funeral homes, um, Leo's saying, is it double charge to embalm the baby as well? Most funeral homes that I know don't charge for baby funerals, period, except for the wholesale of any merchandise. Some even donate that. Um, so I would never am charge to embalm the baby separately or on its own. Um, but yes, a very hard situation. And it doesn't happen that often. You do hear about it in the news when it does happen, you know, if it's a car accident or a murder or something like that. So a lot of um, statistically, I know I've read articles and statistics about this, that a lot of pregnant deaths are due to domestic violence, murder, that type of scenario. 
that is more customary or more common than most other forms of death when you're pregnant, which is horrible. Yes, we use the trocar on a pregnant woman. Thank you, Shani. Um, all right. Other two questions that they had asked. Is a properly embalmed body stiff? I've heard you refer to the embalming fluids firming up the tissue, but should it be stiff? So it depends on the embalmer, honestly, and the fluid. So glutaraldehyde-based fluids, the body is not as firm right away, especially. Formaldehyde fluids firm up the tissue, and that's as you're going along. So if you want to know if you get distribution to both sides of the face equally, you can do <laughs> You can kind of do this to the, the nose of the person and you can feel if they're firming each side are firming evenly um, on the hand. If you do like this and the tissue stays up, then you're getting the chemicals in there. So there's different things you can do to kind of check, kind of do the cheek check. And if the cheek stays up a little bit and then slowly comes down, it's the, the, Chemicals are distributing out into the tissue, and that's what we want. Some people do not embalm as firmly as others. Sometimes we'll say rock them, which means we want them firm and hard because we're going to have to keep them for a while, or we're going to be shipping them somewhere else, and we want to make sure they are well preserved because we don't know how long they're going to be around for before burial. So it just depends on the person and what they use. I wonder how they did the baby of Lacey Peterson. So her and that child were so decomposed at that point that there couldn't have been much left to be able to do much with. I am going to guess, huge assumption, huge guess, but I'm guessing it's a good guess. Have you ever prepared a body that was frozen, perhaps by a medical examiner coroner? So how does that affect the embalming process? Um, the cells are definitely affected by that frozen. You do not want to embalm while the person is still frozen or even at that low of a temperature. So you need to bring the body, the temperature of the body closer to room temperature. So they need to set out for a while, which is a slippery slope because as that body comes back up to temperature, they're going to go into decomposition fairly quickly, almost catching up to where they should be. We cannot freeze bodies at the funeral home. We are regulated as to what temperature we can keep them. At the medical examiner corner, they can do what they would like, I believe. Um, and yes, we've gotten some bodies that are fairly cold. The coldest, though, I will tell you that we get is when they die at the VA hospital. The VA hospital coolers, I don't even know. It's like subarctic that these bodies are almost fro. They're so so cold when we get them and very firm. So to me, it feels frozen. Um, I mean, I guess we don't know for sure that they're frozen, but yeah, super frozen. Um, we have gotten bodies that have been outside for a day or two in the winter. Um, and they have been quite cold, but a lot of those people are going to go to the medical examiner first. So they're going to have their thawing period while they're at the medical examiner, as opposed to directly into our care. So there are some variables. You definitely have to involve certain ways. We're going to have some a video coming out here, not too long about embalming when someone um, dies in the elements like that. So oh, it's sad to think about the Watts family. Yeah, that video, doing the video talking about that and really diving into the whole story and the autopsy information and such was, oh, heartbreaking when it came to that. Just heartbreaking. What people do to other people, we see on that body. We see the infliction that came from someone's choice to do that. And especially thinking of that, that a parent doing that to a child is unbelievable. It's just, oh goodness, it's unbelievable. So yeah, we do see the, the work of the hands of evil, I guess you could say, in what we do. 
The funeral director for my grandma told us to not to put real flowers in the casket because it decomposes them faster after burial. Yes. So it's moisture. There's moisture in flowers. And so when you put that moisture inside the casket, it's going to attribute to the decomposition and the liquefaction or the, you know, whatever happens to the body in that casket. And if it's sealed up, if it's not sealed up, whatever it may be. But yes, flowers do affect it. Marilyn, Marilyn, hi. Um, I know you just came over. So um, Marilyn's part of the mortuary crew and um, did a little video for them getting their opinions on some things. So that's when you go to the main, main page, there's subscribe and then there's a join button and that's to join the mortuary crew, um, which is kind of like a Patreon, but it's on YouTube. So do some definite um, special videos for them and some postings and things for them. I am Balmer deceased. I was held in the cooler for six weeks. What is the longest I've experienced? Um, I had a gentleman that was dead um, about two and a half to three weeks before embalming. And then we held him another couple weeks after and did a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. Like the embalming's not made to work, you know, perfectly for that. Um, but I know that over in, cause Cynthia, you're in Ireland, right? Um, you know, when you get to England and stuff, yeah, you get bodies that have been dead in morgues for weeks at a time before you get them. And then you embalm this already decomposed tissue. You're only going to get dispersion within the body to a certain degree. It, it's just, not going to happen. Parts of that body and parts of that vascular system have already broken down. So you just do your best. Um, but I know you don't have like viewing viewings in England like they do here. Ireland though, you are big on the wake and big on taking them back to the house and doing a day or two long viewings and such. So very different there. Um, would you ever be willing to buy a house someone died in? Yes, I would. I, I don't think that would scare me away. Do soul funeral home have the briefing like the Watts case funeral? So, uh, you know, you would think they do. Um, it's one thing when, during one of my continuing ads that I talk about that funeral homes really need to do debriefings with their staff after every funeral, whether it's a huge one like the Watts family or something, or whether it's just, you know, 99 year old Grace, who died, and it was a straightforward funeral. It's good for the, the staff to come together, understand what happened during the service, what went well, what they could do better. Shout out, you know, give shout outs to your staff members during that time. Allow sharing of, you know, thoughts, emotions, and such, and create just a support level for your staff, regardless of which service. I mean, every funeral is special. For that family, every funeral has emotion. Every funeral is based on the loss, a death that has completely changed the structure of a family. So it's good for staff to come together to talk about those things and just, you know, create that support system. The Shakella Robinson, I don't know that one. I'll have to look that one up. The Shakella Robinson case. I'm going to um, put that in my search bar and save that for a little later to check that out because I am not familiar with that one. We'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Um, how do you get a license for the funeral home? Uh, kind of like any business, you have to apply for a license with the state. They have to come into inspections. You have a whole list of what you have to have in the funeral home, what you have to have in the prep room, what you have to have on hand, manager in place, you know, certain your general price list have to be FTC approved and, and everything. So it's going through the process, just like any business. Yes, Mary, the baby, I believe the baby and Lacey were found separate or it wrapped up in a blanket together or something. Um, I'll have to go back and reference the autopsy and look at all that stuff. So, all right, got to jump off. But thank you guys for joining. Uh, if you missed 
kind of the big answer about the baby and stuff, go back to the beginning and rewatch this. And it's one of the biggest questions I get along the way is what happens, especially if there's a new story about somebody that's pregnant that dies, what happens to the baby? And yes, baby can be saved if there's enough medical attention there immediately when the woman dies, but the baby is only going to survive for a short period of time in utero in the woman after her death. So they have to get that baby out very quickly to give the baby a chance if it's far enough along even. So thank you guys. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to be posting a video this weekend called Murder at the Funeral Home. Yay, it's a story I've been wanting to tell you guys. So watch for that. Bye.